So I'm thinking of getting a Sega Saturn someday. You know, get into retro gaming. Yeah, I was I was watching this one guy play this game called uh, Borku, Barku, something like that. I I don't really know how you pronounce it, but I got kind of invested in it. The whole Sega Saturn library is a bit of a it's a bit of a mystery. You know, there's some games on there that are pretty well known, but what about the ones that aren't? There's got to be some interesting ones that are kind of considered lost media outside the, you know, the, the console itself. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's on the Wii. I, I saw that, but like, it's about the authentic experience, Heimrich. Besides, I heard the Wii version is kind of bland by comparison. I, I did see it in some reviews. I, I don't know. What, what do you think, robot friend? How did that happen? But he was supposed to be here and, and tell spooky stories with us. Oh yeah, that did happen, didn't it? Well, I guess we all got our wish. But at what cost? Let's take a moment to remember all the moments we had with a little robot aimbot friend. Well, I'm just gonna- I'm gonna get kicked, so... They can't shoot me if they don't see me. Ah, they saw me! Never mind, forget it. This guy basically made the entire TF2 experience a nightmare, and now he's gone. They're all gone! The nightmare is over, folks! The bots are gone! We're back! Hello, hello, hello everyone. You know the drill. It is time for... Hey, spooky TF2 Tales! Part 6! So, how was your October, Heimrich? <laughs> Getting into streaming, eh? What kind of games do you play? <laughs> Left for Dead. That's where you shoot zombies, isn't it? <laughs> Is that kind of awkward for you? Well, it's because you play a game where you shoot zombies and and you're you're not responding to me. You're making this awkward. And uh, how was your October, robot friend? All oh, right, you're dead. Uh, could I could I get the book, please? Th thanks. <clears throat> miss him? Why would I miss that guy? What do I look like? Some guy with Stockholm syndrome? I mean, he may have been a guest on the show and such, and kind of became a, a tradition. Uh, on to our first story. I call it... Playing with Fire! This sinister tale takes place on the map Hell Tower, which I'm very certain most people are familiar with at this point. I still remember back when it got released. I was taking a college course in Java. Why is that scary? Uh, I, I don't know, I just wanted to share. We join our local player playing as a heavy, who is easily distracted for some reason. He's staring at the clock tower when he's suddenly hit by something that burns him. He's a little flustered. He looks around a bit confused, but then discovers a pyro up ahead who is hellbent on killing him from a distance. 
the Heavy is quite confident right now and begins to toy with the Pyro. But, you know what they say. Don't play with matches or you're destined to be burned. Suddenly, a secondary Pyro appears much closer to the Heavy and burdenates him with little resistance. Word to the wise, don't underestimate the enemy team. I swear, every time that shot goes off, it's like every three seconds or something. So I noticed you never actually leave your cage. Prange! What happens every year, you know, we talk it out, we do our thing, and then... I go and leave and do my thing, and you stay in there. You never actually leave the building with me. Prange! Do you just stay in there all year round, or is there a hidden door that I'm not seeing? Prange! You know, I can install a door on that, it's not gonna be hard. Oh, hello everyone, welcome back. And now it is time for our second tale. This tale is about my personal favorite class, the Scout. Always on the move towards his goals. But sometimes being in a rush is not the best strategy, as you will learn in this tale. I call it, Start First and Last. <laughs> This horrendous tale takes place on the map Bloodwater. This is a payload map as I clarified in the past. We join our local player playing as a scout, looking quite fabulous with his pony outfit on. He is currently trying to fill up his contract for tonight. You may notice part of the contract is collecting pumpkins. These pumpkins are little items that occasionally pop out of a player when you kill them and they grant you temporary crits. So even when you're not working on contracts, they are more often than not worth the effort in getting. The scout manages to kill off an enemy pyro and out pops a pumpkin. He immediately dashes towards the pumpkin. Nothing can stop him. Or can it? Suddenly, an enemy medic pops in and steals the pumpkin and kills off the scout with the very crit that he was after. Sometimes, when you have a goal in mind, you may find yourself dashing only towards it without realizing what lies ahead. So when you have a goal in mind, head towards it but tread carefully, for you may not realize what lies ahead. And go! How long was that one? Brains. Oh damn it. That means you win the bet. Brains. Yes, yes, cash only, I get it. Oh yes, hello again. Still sitting around, I see. A brave one you are, yes. But I promise you, my final tale will be more than enough to wipe that smirk off your face. Brains. Yes, I know that your mouth is not in a smirk, it's like a permanent scream or something. I, it's not the point. Anyway, the third tale is often the one I say the best for last. I call it The Entangled Enemies. This excruciating tale takes place on the map Iaduct. If you heard my tale, The Phantom Bullet, you're well aware how this map works. King of the Hill and a Halloween boss named Monoculus. One thing I did not clarify last time is that there's a section where players can travel to via a portal that is left by Monoculus. On the other side is another world. Down here, players travel across a dire path for a chance of overcharge and crits. In this world, you will take damage, and you must race to the finish or die trying. 
However, two players are in for quite a surprise. For the first time, we are going to be joining two local players. One playing as a soldier. The other we will visit momentarily. The truce is active like it always is 80% of the time, and Monocula soon teleports away from everyone. Our soldier jumps into the portal. It is here that we encounter our other local player playing as a sniper, who is in fact on the opposite team. Both players find each other suspended in midair, unable to move, whom were once enemies on opposite sides are now victims of a shared fate. All they can do is look around and have a mutual understanding of their oncoming demise. As the area continues to damage them, the sniper falls first, followed by our soldier. So next time you have an opportunity to enter those portals to change your luck in getting crits and uber, be sure to think twice. You'll never know if you'll be safe on the other side, truce or not. Well, everyone, um, this is usually where we have our little robot friend telltale, but, yeah. <sighs> I suppose you're right in a way. He was a piece of garbage, but he was our piece of garbage. <laughs> you're right, of course. Send us off with your tail, Heimrich. I'll make a phone call for a friend who owes me a favor. I know this guy was a piece of shit. It just didn't feel right to do the show without him. He's basically harmless now. He can't really hurt anyone. Hey, if you want me to stop destroying your buildings for three months, you better hold up your end of the deal too. Uh. Alrighty then. How's it going? Well, we did, actually. But then we realized, like it or not, you were a part of the show as well. I did not think you cared. This phrase almost me. I now realize. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you again, everyone. That is all the time we have this year, and we will see you again next year. Happy Halloween, as always. What? But I only just... You always know exactly what to say to end the show with. I hate you all. We hate you too, old friend. We hate you too. What happened? What, what the... What the bloody hell just happened? That's some shonky business right there. <laughs> <laughs>